and welcome to the final video in my draft driving pair series. If you missed the making of the horses, wagon, and doll, make sure to check them out. Now my Clydesdales can't really pull a wagon without a harness, so that's what we'll be making today. As a disclaimer, when making any model tack, especially harnesses, you will need a lot of patience. And it's definitely okay to step back and take breaks. In fact, it's probably necessary. With that out of the way, let's begin. I will be referencing Chicago-style harnesses, famously used by the Budweiser Clydesdales. It's important to look at a lot of references and watch videos to understand how they work. Now harnesses, especially these full ones, can seem intimidating and complicated at first, but once you break them down into sections, it's pretty straightforward. So I will be breaking this video into sections based on the different parts. I actually skipped around quite a bit since I had to wait for things to dry, as well as to make the second harness. But for the sake of this video, I've put them in order. So the first thing I will be starting with is the collar. This is honestly the hardest part, so once this is out of the way, it's pretty smooth sailing. I'm using this black vinyl that isn't super thick, but strong enough to be durable and hold its shape. You're probably asking, what are you doing there with the hot glue? I let the hot glue dry so it would be thicker in the front when I fold it over. I cut a large triangle out of the center of the back so it folds over easier. And then I fill it in with more glue. I love hot glue. I make sure to try it on the horse and trim it as needed. I don't worry how the top looks yet since I'll be trimming it and adding the top piece. To make sure it doesn't come apart when I take it on and off the horse, I hot glue the top and use some super glue for extra strength. To make the template for the top of the collar, I hold it to the horse and make a rough sketch. I flush it out and then use it as a pattern to trace onto the vinyl. I'm using a Posca paint pen so it will show up on the black. I use the super glue to glue the tops together and attach it to the rest of the collar. Next, I cut out a small triangle to fill in the gap in the top and connect the pieces. I trace the back and do the same thing on that side. Before I glue it on, I add in a ring since it will connect to the strap along the back. For the silver piece going around the collar, also called Hames, I am using this all-purpose wire. It's pretty strong, so I need to bend it with pliers. I attach rings to it, and I'm actually using some skirt clasps as well.
the super glue dried, it left a little bit of white, so I just painted over it with black acrylic. I'd be more careful if you're using brown, since it's harder to color match. Now to make the first of many, many buckles. You can buy pre-made ones, but I like to just make mine, especially since I will need so many for this harness. Using a decently strong wire, I pinch where the middle will be with my needle nose pliers. I like these since I can make different sizes. With my other pair of pliers, I bend the wire over the top and bottom. I snip it off with my cutters. And now I can attach it to the front of the collar. These are just for looks, so I can just glue them right on. Next, I'm using this fold-over bead tips, which took me forever to find out what they're actually called, and I'm still not totally sure. But I'm using them for decoration by flattening them and then cutting the hook part off. I will be keeping some of the hooks on them for later. detail to the top of the wire, I'm using my Aves two-part epoxy. I'm forming it into a little tiny ball and then the tassel piece on top of that. I can make more little decorations for later by pressing it flat and cutting out shapes with my knife. a few of the extra bead tips for more detail. Once that's all hardened overnight, I paint everything with my silver testers enamel paint. I give that an equally long time to dry before removing them from the foil and gluing them onto the collar. The front will be connected to the beam that pulls the wagon, so I add the breast strap using some leather cord and more buckles I made. I made the middle buckle similar to the other ones, just adding a long rectangle on the bottom and then bending the whole thing in half. Next, I carefully glue D-shaped rings that the bearing rein will hook into. I make some breast strap decorations with these crescent moon-shaped pieces. With the collar done, it's time to make the saddle. Yep, it's still caught a saddle on the harness. I make a template by drawing on paper wrapped around the horse. I make a few adjustments and then fold it in half to cut it out so it's symmetrical. Next, I trace it onto the vinyl. Since I have two horses, I am cutting two of everything out as I go. This style of saddle sits off the back a little, so I use hot glue to fill the space in and make it thicker.
I also make these smaller pieces that go on top, making sure to insert my wire with a ring for the strap going along the back. Next I will be making the four crosses that go on the sides to hold the trace that hooks into the wagon. I start by bending the wire into this shape like an 8 with a flat top and bottom. These will be the structure I form the epoxy around. The wire will be in the ends that hook to the cords, making sure they won't break. I paint them silver as well. I'm also using the silver to add the dots to the edges for more detail. The bottom is pretty simple. I add on two straps, one to hook to the saddle and one for the cross. I add a ring on the back one so the quarter straps can hook on. I glue the buckles to the top, but a stronger way is to glue it to a small ribbon of fabric and then glue that to the leather. Don't worry, I do that later. Now I showed you how to make round buckles, but I need a lot of rectangles too, which are a little trickier. I pinch the wire and bend as I go. It takes a little bit of practice to learn to gauge what length to do to get the right size. With my freshly made buckles, I can attach the trace holder. It's a little confusing, but basically I'm just making sure there's a loop for the trace to go through and that it's the right height. I loop on a strap that will connect to the collar. Now the other side. Next, I can buckle it all on.
I make this little back piece the same way as the saddle. I am using the fabric strips to hold the buckle on so it won't be ripped off. Later I found it's easier to glue the fabric to the buckle first and then glue it to the leather, but either way works. I'm adding a little bit of wire to the underside so I can bend it to sit on the horse's back better. To the hip straps. As you can see, I've made the first one so you have a better idea of what I'm doing. I make these weird fork shapes and glue them on either side of a large ring. I glue wire squares that I made to the bottom. I measure a larger strip I cut along the rump and make the breaching. I hold it up to the horse to measure how far apart I should glue the squares. I use that to make sure the rest are even. These little decorations will hang off the lazy strap. Now it's just the tedious process of attaching all the six hip drops.
after all that's done, I can attach it all with the back strap. For the traces, I'll be using a thicker cord. I hook them through like you would a real horse. For the bridle, I will be making an elbow bit, kind of like this. I wrap the wire around a bead that will act as the part in the mouth. This is a lot of trial and error, especially since I have to make four of the same size. With the bits done, I start the bridle by making a headpiece. I make it a little curved so it will fit this model. I buckle on the cheek pieces and make a loop for the nose band. I attach them together with the bit.
I make sure to put it on the horse to make the throat latch. Next is the brow band with decoration, as well as two blinkers I made by just holding up vinyl to the face and cutting some squares out. I also made sure to add little strips to the top. I add on a decorative nose band, which looking back may have been a little high. Once it's all on, I can add the bearing rein using the smallest chain I could find. I'm adding regular necklace clasps to the front so I can hook them up to the wagon more easily. It's also pretty much the same concept when hitching the real horse, just smaller. The reins are pretty simple, you just have to remember that they will crisscross, so the right hand rein pulls the right side of the bridle, and the left side pulls the left. For the final touch, I'm adding ribbons on a wire so I can just bend them over the collar.
we're all done. Time for the final result. I'm really pleased with how it all came out. It was a ton of work, but so worth it. I can't believe this is what we started with. From the first cut into the horse to placing the ribbons on the collar it took me about five months, so thank you for sticking around. I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Make sure to boop that like button and subscribe for more projects.